Yes, Chinese electric cars are everywhere. Just look at this graph. How did China go from the bottom to the world's biggest car exporter in just three years? When it comes to electric vehicles, China is way ahead of big names like Germany and Japan. In 2022, China's EV sales shot up by 82%, making up nearly 60% of global EV purchases. This is way more than what we see in the US, Norway and other early adopters. China also accounted for 35% of global EV exports in 2022. In fact, Chinese automaker BYD sold more EVs than Tesla in the last quarter of 2023. So how did China pull this off? What did Chinese car makers do differently? And what can other companies learn from them? Many thought China's EV boom was just because of government subsidies, but that's not the full story. Other countries have similar subsidies, but haven't seen the same results. In this video, we'll dive into how China became the largest EV market in the world. Trust us, you'll be amazed by how they did it. But before we get into it, consider subscribing to our channel to show your support. Now, let's dive in. Number 1. China started with adjacent industries. Many people think China became the largest market for electric vehicles because of government subsidies, but many other countries have similar policies without the same success. China is among the top five countries for high EV sales. Norway leads the world with over 80% of car sales being electric in 2022, followed by Iceland at 41%, Sweden at 32%, the Netherlands at 24% and China at 22%. China's position is especially significant since it has the largest car market globally. China started its EV push later than the US. While both countries had similar incentives for companies and consumers, Chinese companies took a different approach. Instead of directly introducing EVs to the market like Tesla, Chinese automakers BYD and Geely quietly experimented in adjacent industries first, namely electric buses and motorcycles. These products are less visible than cars, but present unique challenges that help them refine their EV strategies. For example, buses are heavier and carry more passengers than commercial sedans. They also operate for about 18 hours a day, requiring greater battery power and storage. More powerful batteries take longer to charge. By focusing on electric buses, BYD pushed the boundaries of battery technology as early as 2009. BYD introduced electric buses in North America in 2013, later supplying them to the Los Angeles Metro system in 2015. BYD electric buses are now prevalent in South America as well. Geely, on the other hand, focused on electric motorcycles, which need lighter and more portable batteries. Electric motorcycles are cheaper to produce and easier for consumers to adopt, quickly replacing internal combustion motorcycles. Starting with electric motorcycles had two core advantages. First, it increased public awareness and acceptance of electric vehicles, and second, it catered to the lower class. As China's economy grew, those using electric motorcycles wanted to upgrade to cars, and they naturally chose electric cars. This approach made Chinese consumers more open to driving EVs over internal combustion vehicles. Experimenting with electric buses and motorcycles allowed companies like BYD to become leading battery producers. By taking an indirect path, both Geely and BYD have become EV giants, innovating at both extremes of battery technology, which is crucial for EV production. Number two, Encourage operational solutions. Another reason China's EV market has soared is that early innovators recognized the operational challenges EVs presented and worked closely with local groups to find solutions. Government policy can encourage new technologies like EVs, but these innovations often introduce practical problems. For example, Many European countries, like the Netherlands, encouraged EV adoption with tax incentives and rebates. However, 
Research found that interest in buying full EVs remained low among taxi drivers. This could be due to operational challenges, such as short driving ranges and long charging times, overshadowing the environmental benefits and other advantages like quieter engines and no need for regular oil or battery changes. So, how did China overcome these hurdles? In 2009, China's government introduced subsidies for hybrid and electric cars and buses in 10 cities. The subsidies for passenger cars ranged from 4,000 to 60,000 yuan. But China went beyond subsidies. In major cities like Beijing and Xi'an, Chinese EV producers worked closely with taxi companies to find practical solutions to improve battery technologies. They didn't just map out charging station locations. They tested different charging schedules that matched the performance of fully electric and hybrid vehicles. EVs with the best batteries can run for up to eight hours in the city. In China, taxi companies using electric or hybrid vehicles typically have two fleets, one for morning and one for evening shifts. The morning shift ends around 6 to 7 p.m. after the workday but before the evening rush. This allows the morning fleet to charge after 8 p.m., avoiding the peak industrial power consumption. The evening fleet returns for charging around 2 to 3 a.m., also during lower power consumption periods. This new schedule, designed by Chinese EV producers and taxi companies, not only addresses EV battery constraints, but also helps balance the city's power grid. Subsidies are helpful, but solving technical hurdles is the real driver behind China's rise in EV adoption. Number three, China's double down on core technology and supply chain. European and US automakers have long dominated the core technology for combustion engines, leaving the Chinese auto industry significantly behind, along with Japan. However, in 2002, Chinese automakers estimated that battery costs would make up 30 to 40 percent of the total manufacturing cost of a fully electric vehicle. This created an opportunity for newcomers to leapfrog the competition by focusing on battery technology. China realized they couldn't surpass US, German, and Japanese automakers in internal combustion engine innovation. This led the Chinese government to invest in a new direction. Cars powered entirely by batteries. The Chinese EV industry also benefits from its proximity to many critical raw material supplies. For example, in 2022, China accounted for 70% of global rare earth production, a key component for batteries. This gives Chinese battery companies a strong position in the supply chain, allowing them to develop new battery technologies and negotiate better deals with suppliers. While China doesn't have the most natural resources for battery materials, it does have the majority of the world's refinery capacity for critical components like cobalt, nickel sulfate, lithium hydroxide, and graphite. China already had some structural advantages. While EV manufacturing involves different technology, it still requires cooperation from the existing auto supply chain, which China had. The manufacturing capabilities and cheap commodities that supported its gas car factories could also be used to support the growing EV industry. So, the Chinese government began investing in related technologies as early as 2001. Since then, EV development has been consistently prioritized in China's national economic planning. In 2008, China invested heavily in the Democratic Republic of Congo, signing a deal for mineral mining in exchange for infrastructure investments. Congo is the largest producer of copper and cobalt, a key metal for batteries. When China signed the deal with Congo in 2008, few understood the importance of these minerals, but today their significance is clear. And that's how China became the world's largest EV market. Even though China wasn't the earliest adopter of EVs, it still managed to surpass countries like the United States and Japan, becoming home to some of the leading EV brands. Do you agree with our analysis? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, 
hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more engaging content.